The racing championship event takes place behind the walls of the Terminal Island Penitentiary and is aired live online to those with premium subscriptions. The inmates are fighting for their freedom using massively armored and adapted vehicles until their last breath. According to the rule, anyone who will win all five races at once will earn the freedom ticket. There are only two vehicles left in today's racing battle. The driver is a man wearing a steel-plated mask by the name of Frankenstein, and his navigator is Case. The other vehicle's driver is the dangerous opponent, Machine Gun Joe. Frank was a quarter mile away from the finish line. Enraged Joe was firing with heavy machine guns at Frank's car with great force from behind. All of a sudden, Frankenstein's car's gadgets cease working. He didn't give up, devised a plan, and lowered the back shield, striking Joe's car. The shield removal was a mistake because the fuel is now vulnerable to direct impacts. Joe doesn't tend to give up easily. As a result, he pursues them with zeal. Frank is anxious to win this race, despite Case's advice that he let Joe have the victory. When Joe was about to launch a rocket at the car, Case finally ejected herself before the rocket hit the car. However, Frank won the race but didn't live to celebrate the victory. The scene then cuts back to a man named Jensen, who heads home after a hectic working day. Jensen says hello to his lovely wife and hands her over the paycheck. He swiftly heads upstairs to see his adorable young daughter before taking a shower. While Jensen was showering, a masked man broke into his house and murdered his beautiful wife. After a while, Jensen came downstairs and found his wife lying on the kitchen floor. As he approached her, a masked man sprayed on his face and knocked him out. Before leaving, he not only put a murder weapon in his hand but even made a shooting gesture with his hand at his face. When Jensen becomes conscious, the cop books him for the murder of his wife and sends him to prison. Six months later, Jensen is transferred to a private prison named Terminal Island Penitentiary. Inside the prison, the correctional officers did the standard prison procedure. After that, the guard Ulrich deliberately escorts him to a troublemaking cell, where he must get into trouble. As he enters the cell, inmates start frightening him, but they don't know that Jensen is a skillful fighter, and he teaches a very good lesson about never messing up with the wrong person. At the same time, Ulrich was laughing and might be considering that Jensen would be lying on the floor. When he returns to Jensen's cell, he is surprised to witness all the inmates lying on the floor. The, slip. the next morning, Jensen goes to the commissary to have breakfast. The oldest inmate, named Coach, inquired about Jensen from other inmates named List and Gunner. They told Coach that Jensen used to be a very skilled driver. In the meantime, an inmate comes from nowhere and spits on Jensen's food. Despite the fact that he didn't seek trouble, trouble found him, Jensen maintained his composure. When the other prisoner, Pacheco, accused him of killing a wife, Jensen lost control and started beating them. The correctional guards arrive quickly and break them up. I guess he didn't like the old man either. After that, correctional officer Ulrich escorted him to the warden's office. Hennessy comes to the point straight and offers him an opportunity to participate in the death race, disguised as Frankenstein. Hennessy further said Frank died on an operating table shortly after his last race, but no one knew about it. He was the audience's favorite, and this race broadcasts live via the internet, bringing a lot of money to the table. Jensen replies that he is not interested. Hennessy replies that one who wins five races will be rewarded freedom from prison. Frank has already won four races. If he wins one more race as Frankenstein, he will walk free from prison as per rule. Hennessy threatens to put him in solitary for a lifetime if he refuses because he knows the secret. Jensen has no choice except to consent to her demands. Ulrich and Hennessy then transport him to the prison auto workshop, where he is introduced to the coach and his team. The coach provides him with the technical details about the car. A modified Mustang V8 fastback with bulletproof glasses, 250 NOS units, and six 6-inch six solid steel shields in the rear for protection. The car is also equipped with smoke grenades, bombs, and 30mm belt-fed machine guns. Where's the ammo? We get that on race day. It's a... Upon Jensen's ideas about breaking the prison, Coach reminds Jensen that correctional officers are armed to the teeth. They also have helicopters, and there is only one skinny bridge for in and out since this prison is built on an island, so breaking out of it is impossible. The coach then explains that the race is split into three phases, lasting for three days. The first two rounds are to destroy as many opponents as possible while alive. Speed is the key in the final round because the winner must finish first. The coach further says he will meet his navigator, Case, a beautiful young girl who will assist with reloading weapons and navigation tomorrow. List, then give him some details about the most important competitors, 14K Chinese Americans with a degree from MIT, Hector Grimm, a psychopath, 
Travis Colt, who used to be a NASCAR driver, and your favorite superstar Pachenko, who you have already met in the commissary. Meanwhile, a van enters the prison's yard with some criminals wearing GPS trackers on their wrists, jogging his recollection of his wife's murderer, who was also wearing the device. On the race day, Jensen disguised as Frankenstein, and a guard escorted him to the racing track. There, he met his navigator Case. Since Case already knew the mystery behind the masked man, Jensen took off his mask and showed her his real identity. Better looking than the last Frank. The race is about to be broadcast live, and 45 million paid viewers have already joined to witness their favorite Frankenstein's victory. That means a mouth-watering revenue. On the other hand, Hennessy enthusiastically monitors the entire event and closely supervises it from the broadcast station. There are nine participants taking part in the race. The green light turns on, and the death race's first rounds begin. Jensen took the lead, but everyone tried to push him away, resulting in Jensen at fourth position. However, Case knows the track well, so she helps take a shortcut, leading him to earn the first rank again. Hennessy activated the swords and shields because the second lap had started. Case informed Jensen that the sword armed the weapons, and the shield triggered the napalm, oil, and smoke. Jensen becomes oversmart and neglects the case's advice, so he fails to obtain the sword. You have to make contact with all four tires simultaneously. On the other hand, the manic Hector grabbed the sword and began pounding his opponent with the machine gun. Meanwhile, Hennessy turns on the death heads. Hector took advantage of the situation by pushing his opponent toward it, culminating in a crash and crushing. Joe activates the gun and starts firing straight at Hector's car from behind. Hector swiftly gets rid of Joe by releasing an oil slick trap as Hector goes behind another opponent with heavy arms firepower. The opponent sets the spike trap, and Hector becomes entangled in it. 14K seizes the opportunity and shoots the rocket towards Hector's automobile, destroying Hector. Since the race is getting more interesting, the number of viewers reached 46 million. Hennessy overjoyed the moment because more viewership means more money. On the other hand, Jensen stole the shield from the Colt, but unfortunately, none of the defense gadgets worked for some reason. No smoke, no oil, no napalm, again. Colt exacts vengeance on Jensen for stealing the shield by firing furiously from behind with machine guns. Coach advised Jensen that shield is not vulnerable. Either take him out or lose him. Jensen devised a brilliant strategy and asked Case to sit on his lap and put the napalm on the passenger seat. He then ejected the passenger seat containing a fuel canister, which hit the ceiling, and all the fuel spilled over Colt's car. Right after, Case dropped the cigarette lighter that caught fire in Colt's car, eliminating him. Meanwhile, Pachenko emerged, and Jensen became preoccupied with him since the gesture he made was identical to that of his wife's killer. Now, Jensen understands why he is being framed for his wife's murder. Joe didn't let go of this opportunity and pushed Jensen off the track. As a result, Jensen came in sixth place, while Pachenko earned first place in the race. After that, Jensen visited Hennessy to inform him about his decision. No racing tomorrow. Hennessy pulls out a picture of his daughter and warns him that if he wants to see her again, he better hit the gas and win the race. Finally, Jensen accepts his fate and consents to the warden's demands. That evening, while working at the workshop, Jensen notices Pachenko walking by, so he follows him to nab him. Unfortunately, one of Pachenko's teammates attacked him from behind, resulting in his capture. When Pachenko was about to hit his head with a giant pipe wrench, List intervened and stabbed him with the pen. Jensen swiftly picks up a piece of metal and uses it to knock the person holding him from behind. He then begins to beat Pachenko until he surrenders. Finally, Pachenko confesses that Ulrich and Hennessy force him to do it. Ulrich arrived on time, and he prevented Jensen from terminating Pachenko. On the race's second day, Jensen didn't take the lead. Instead, he slowly drove to the tunnel to chat with Case. Jensen threatened to eject her from the car. Case confessed that Hennessy would reward her freedom if she didn't let Jensen win the race. Case also acknowledged disabling the car's rear weapon in earlier competitions. Hennessy never wanted Jensen to be released because she wanted to keep him in prison and racing for her. Just make it exciting. That's what I wanted to know. Jensen then accelerates the car and pursues Pachenko, intending to execute him. Case advised him to take the shield, but Jensen did the opposite and took the sword. He turns around the car and fires machine guns at Pachenko until he clutches the shield. Jensen quickly turns around and strikes the smoke, causing Pachenko to collide with the pillar. Jensen stopped the car and witnessed Pachenko survive the crash. He promptly steps out of his car and executes Pachenko. Meanwhile, Hennessy dropped a surprise massively armored truck called Dreadnought to spice up the race. 
Dreadnought swiftly knocks out two participants with such powerful fire. Right after, Dreadnought takes out 14k as well. Given the strength and effectiveness of the Dreadnought, no participant might survive in its presence. Jensen came up with a brilliant idea and requested Liz to connect him with Joe. How about we play a little offense? Joe consents to collaborate with him despite their animosity because it's a life or death situation. While still alive, both of them skillfully escape the powerful weaponry and successfully set off the dead head, which devastates the Dreadnought. Upon witnessing the destruction of Dreadnought, Hennessy becomes mad. That evening, Hennessy devises a plan with Ulrich to get rid of Jensen. According to Hennessy, anyone can put on the mask and transform into Frankenstein. The following morning, before the race begins, Ulrich plants a bomb under Jensen's car to eliminate him on the racetrack. Meanwhile, Jensen visited Joe's pit to discuss and prepare a scheme for the upcoming race. Jensen then requests Liszt to install an extra half-gallon reserve tank in his car. As Jensen prepared for the final race, Hennessy visited him and handed over the released paper. However, Hennessy requests him to stay in prison as Frankenstein since he is a convicted criminal and not a daddy material, so he can't give a bright future to his little daughter. I can see the appeal. Jensen then heads to the racing track and sits in the car. Case updates him that Hennessy asks her to stop him from winning at any cost. Case further says she has already got her released paper. Finally, the race begins, and Jensen takes the lead. Ulrich controls everything from the command center. As Jensen tries to grab the sword, Ulrich deactivates it and swiftly reactivates it for Joe. He starts shooting with heavy weaponry at Jensen from behind. Jensen eventually asks Case to drop the shield, and Joe efficiently manages to avoid it because the same tactic doesn't work twice. Joe then launches rockets to wreck the weak wall instead of destroying Jensen's car. They played the drama of eliminating each other so brilliantly that the Warden had no idea what their goal was. They're escaping. They're headed for the bridge. Hennessy got panicked and ordered to shut down the broadcast right away. Meanwhile, Joe and Jensen congratulate each other on their victory. Hennessy tries to blow the bomb in a fit of wrath, but Coach has already deactivated it. The petrol car starts chasing them. However, Jensen has a little surprise for them as well. He slammed the pursuing police cars with the extra half-gallon fuel tank, effectively stopping them at the bridge. Joe and Jensen then split into different directions to distract the chasing helicopters. Jensen spots an opportunity in the dark and quickly exits the car. Meanwhile, the helicopter mindlessly chases the car while Case drives the car. After a small chase, they nab her. She came out of the vehicle disguised as Frank and got arrested. Hennessy got relief upon hearing this good news. At the same time, Joe and Jensen board the train to escape from there. Ulrich handed her a gift from a fan, and when she opened it, it contained the identical explosives Ulrich had hidden beneath Jensen's car. At that moment, Coach detonates it, killing both of them. Six months later, we learned that Joe and Jensen had opened a car workshop in Mexico. Suddenly, a Dodge Charger speeds toward their garage, and it turns out that Case has also been released from prison. So that was Death Race. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and turn on the notification so you won't miss the next recap. Until then, cheers.